get up in front of people and your mouth, all the saliva disappears. <laughs> in a case of dry mouth, it's incredible. Um, for those of you that have been here for a few years uh, and have thought about and prayed about my kids who serve in the military, Ryan, my youngest son, is, has uh, finished his term of enlistment and is back with us and is sitting in the congregation with the guys today. And now that I've properly embarrassed him. <laughs> it's neat to see you here, you know, sitting among all the other veterans that have served and, you know, served their country here. And we, in our church, we have many veterans uh, from every branch, uh, well, nearly every branch of, of the military. We have Air Force, Army, Navy, Marines, and you know each branch has its own unique uniform, its own unique ranking system. But what they all have in common is the initial training called boot camp. <laughs> Those of you who've been there know what I'm talking about. This is a time of initial, of intense mental and physical training that all recruits must go through. Not only do they have to be hardened physically, but they have to be trained to think like a soldier. They need to obey orders immediately and under pressure. Now everything in basic training is go, go, go. When a bus carrying the recruits arrives at base, drill sergeants may storm on board that bus and they can shout, you have 15 seconds to get off this bus and you just wasted five. This sets the pace for the next several weeks. <laughs> Wake up now! Get out of bed now! You have a minute to get out of the rack and get down and form up for PT. Let's go, let's go, move it, move it, move it! And recruits will rush to chow and then stand in line. <laughs> and they'll rush to appointments and stand in line. They'll rush everywhere and stand in line. And this hurry up and wait insanity may seem completely pointless at the time, but there's a reason for it. The military is trying to instill a sense of urgency in young people who generally have a very relaxed attitude toward life. Now, most young recruits have little or no sense of urgency prior to enlisting. You know, they wake up uh, at their own pace, and they take a nice long shower, and they eat breakfast watching TV, playing computer, you know, and they perform their daily tasks, but you know, it's not with a real sense of urgency, you know, there's no real drive to it. And this definitely is not an attitude that's useful to the military especially for those that are being trained for combat or, in the case of the Coast Guard, for rescue. Now, I'm going to be showing a part of a video that the Coast Guard put out about their boot camp. And this video is, it, it was uh, created to show people that are thinking about enlisting just what they might encounter when they enter the military. And so, it's only going to be a few seconds, and uh, what you're going to see gives you an indication of the intensity that the instructors are trying to instill, and the key words that you're going to hear, whether you understand them or not, uh, but what you're going to hear is sense of urgency, sense of urgency. Okay, Bill? No, I do just... Move, 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 sense of urgency. Hurry up, hurry up, sense of urgency, sense of urgency, sense of urgency. I want them to remember that for the rest of their lives when they first meet me. Welcome to the United States Coast Guard. Let's go. <laughs> oh, let's go. <laughs> but think about it, you know, the Coast Guard really needs a sense of urgency. When people need rescuing, they need help now. You know, if a burning ship can sink in minutes, and a person can burn to death, or they can drown, and you can't get there fast enough. A crew member on a freighter can have a life-threatening uh, accident. Uh, a passenger on a cruise liner 
can uh, have a, a health issue. A child may get sucked out to sea on Oregon's uh, powerful riptide. People <clears throat> in immediate or imminent danger of dying can't wait. They need help now. They are, they need urgent need. They think they, they need, urgently need a rescue. Now, I believe all believers would benefit from a boot camp-like experience for Christians. Very few of us have a true sense of urgency. And I'm just as guilty as anyone else. When we come to Christ, we are much like those young recruits. Now, just when, what does a sense of urgency look like? How many parents or grandparents have seen a child do the pee-pee dance? Yeah. <laughs> I need to go now. I can't wait. You know, now, now, now. <laughs> Equally as urgent is that adult rushing that child to the nearest toilet, tree, or bush. You know, just <laughs> I believe that's the sense, level of the sense of urgency that Christians need to have when sharing their the good news of Jesus Christ with people who need to hear. Well, so anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share with you three thoughts regarding uh, what I see as a lack of sense of urgency. And, and believe me, I started, I, I started looking at myself first, and then I saw a pattern within uh, uh, probably most of Christianity. First, I want to discuss why we don't have it. I think there are two reasons why we don't have a sense of urgency. And then how can we get a sense of urgency? And finally, how can we maintain that sense of urgency? Because if you got it for a few seconds and it's gone, what's the point? So, why no sense of urgency? Well, I believe there are two reasons for a lack of sense of urgency. And ironically, they're opposites. I got too much of one thing and too little of another. So what we have had is too much time, and what we often do not have is enough love. Over 2,000 years have passed since Jesus' resurrection and promised return. And a span of over two millennia can have a dampening effect on one's enthusiasm and sense of urgency. Time limits and deadlines motivate us to action. I know this is true because my mom used this time tool for years to motivate her kids and grandkids to action. She would say in a semi-threatening tone, I'm going to count to 10 and you better have that done before I get to 10. And we'd rush to get the job done because you never knew how fast mom would choose to count. <laughs> and we didn't want to risk the, the unspoken consequences that were implied. Some grandkids became so sensitive to the count that mom would start out and they would rush off to, to their task calling out of the shoulder, no grandma, don't count, don't count. <laughs> so you see with a specific deadline, we get a sense of urgency. The apostles and the early church believed that Jesus would return within their lifetimes. Peter wrote in his first letter, chapter four, verse seven, the end of all things is near. Therefore, be alert and sober of mind so that you can pray. The writer of Hebrews in chapter 10, 24 and 25, we read that as our opening verse. And let us consider how we may spur one another toward love and good deeds, not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day approaching. Then John, in his little epistle of 1 John, chapter 2, verse 28, And now, dear children, continue in him, so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed at his coming. <coughs> then we have Revelation 1, -1 the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants what must soon take 